here. And I click, and what, what, is, what is this? Uh, this is a TikTok about our uh, podcast Creeperpodden i P3. Strax nordväst om Södertälje, någonstans i skogen, så finns ett hus som man får 5 000 kronor bara om man går igenom det. Det hela låter enkelt. Ett kråkslott i skogen, det har nio rum, gå igenom alla och du får belöningen. Men det finns en hake. Huset i skogen kallas oändligt och det beror på att det innehåller några av de värsta mardrömmarna man kan överhuvudtaget tänka sig. Och varje rum är värre än det förra. Det oändliga huset är en prövning som det inte är garanterat att man klarar av. Och det värsta är att det kanske inte är över bara för att man kommer ut. Ska du våga gå in i det oändliga huset? Om du vill höra vad som hände en som försökte, då kan du lyssna på avsnitt 25 av Creepypodden i P3. Mysterious, right. Okay, perhaps you're going to talk more about that say, yes, later on. Uh, please also welcome uh, Dario Marschatz, all the way from Croatia. He's one of the biggest <laughs> Balkan influencers on TikTok. So you're quite famous, Dario. Uh, they say so. Yeah, yeah, they say so. You are, actually. I've, <laughs> I've checked it in. Uh, you came directly from Egypt to yeah. Prague. Yeah, yeah. And you were in Egypt to, uh, to record some TikTok, right? Yeah, especially for recording TikTok. Oh, yeah. And a little bit of vacation. Oh. <laughs> But mostly for recording, right? Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> quite good. We're going to watch uh, a clip from, from Egypt. Three things I learned in Egypt. The capital of Egypt, Cairo, has over 20 million inhabitants and only, watch out for this, nine traffic lights. 92% of Egypt is desert. And the third one, KFC is only a hundred meters away from the Sphinx. Egyptian joke that in the world KFC means Kentucky Fried Chicken and in their country it means Kentucky Fried Camel. <laughs> Looks like you're having a good job. Yeah. <laughs> you're not complaining, right? Okay, um, Dario, uh, one third of the people in here use TikTok regularly, so uh, many of you need to know a little bit more how this biggest platform or the biggest growing platform on social media is working. So the stage is yours and you're going to talk about that a little bit. Thank you very much. And here's the clicker. Thank you very much. Hello everybody. I hope you're doing well. So like Kim, Kim said, I just came from Egypt. There was like 30 degrees Celsius and today was snowing here in Prague. So it was uh, definitely stopping, stepping out of my comfort zone with this temperature. So I hope so that you will step out of your comfort zone with TikTok too. A lot of you uh, raised your hand when Kim asked how, many, how, how much of you uh, got TikTok and how many of you know something about TikTok. So I was surprised that a lot of you just raised the, uh, raised the hand. So I was basically thinking, what would I say on this stage? You know probably all of it, but I'll, I'll do my best uh, to teach you and show you some uh, tricks about uh, TikTok as a marketing tool to generate traffic. Uh, before this, a little bit about me, just so I can probably someone motivate here in, uh, in uh, some of you, what I can motivate or inspire to start creating content. So basically you can have results like me or even better. Uh, first, I heard about TikTok, that was three years ago uh, on Instagram. A people that I followed, a lot of them were posting different TikTok videos on their Instagram story. So I was like, I don't know nothing about TikTok. I just want to download it and start scrolling and see uh, what kind of content is uh, there. So at first, I didn't like TikTok and the second and the third because back then there was, there was a lot of uh, dancing and lip sync videos and I was definitely not uh, the target audience for this. But after a few scrolls, uh, I realized there's a lot of opportunity there and started creating my own content. After first month of creating content, I uh, gained 1,000 followers, which was a lot for me because I've never created content before. I got my Instagram account with around uh, 200 followers, and this was my uh, these were my friends from uh, high school, from college, and that's it. So basically, 1,000 followers uh, was a lot. Uh, after uh, well, after first month, 
I definitely realize, realize that in Croatia and in Balkan, Balkan region, there's a lot of opportunities because back then none of brands were on TikTok. So I started, uh, I, I left my job and everything what I was doing, people said back then that that was crazy and I agree with them and started creating 20 to 30 videos every single day. So after second month, I got around 30,000 followers. Uh, and after third month of creating content on TikTok, I got more than 100,000 followers. Uh, everything after is a yeah, uh, story. Uh, now I got more than half a million followers that are from Balkan region. And a lot of them follow me on Instagram. So I gained uh, from one organic platform more than 100,000 followers on Instagram. And one year ago, I started posting content on uh, LinkedIn. So I got more than 15 followers, uh, 15,000 followers there. So basically, what is my job? I help uh, brands build their co community on TikTok. So uh, I'm managing their uh, TikTok profiles. Um, when I first got uh, my client, I started creating videos for him. and. Uh, immediately after, after first client, the second came by, the third at four, and after a while, it was too much job for me to handle just one guy creating content for all of them. So basically, what I done is gather a lot of different uh, TikTokers from different niches uh, from Balkan region and created uh, the biggest uh, community of TikTok creators, which I called Crew. So this is. A uh, little pro portfolio from me. Uh, what is interesting about TikTok is that a lot of mainstream media likes to follow viral videos and post it on their pages uh, in mainstream media on report or report them on news. So basically, what does it mean that if your radio station, if your uh, TikTok creator, you can basically uh, have some free PR? So what is TikTok? I want to ask you, what is the first thing that pops on your mind when somebody says TikTok? You can shout it loud, it's okay. Dancing. Dance, great. Kids. Kids, beautiful. Third? Jordy. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, everything what uh, you said is basically uh, left thing that's called Musical.ly. And Musical.ly is a platform uh, the, that first began uh, his story in 2014. It was all about lip sync and all about dancing. A lot of people when, today, when someone says TikTok, they immediately think of uh, dancing videos, lip sync, and kids, and short, uh, short videos. Uh, because Musical.ly, back then, uh, was up to 15 second videos. So after, uh, in 2018, ByteDance uh, company buys the Musical app and transfers all users and content to new platform TikTok. And after that, immediately uh, videos uh, pop from uh, 15 seconds to 30 seconds, minute, three minutes, five minutes, and now we can upload uh, up to 10 minute videos on TikTok today. TikTok in number, uh, TikTok now got more than one and a half billion active monthly users. 90% of users assess the application daily, and average user spends around 50, uh, 52 minutes a uh, day on this app. Who's on TikTok now? So basically, TikTok is a platform where when all the younger generations uh, are uh, creating their own content. So basically, you got all younger generation on one app, that's TikTok. But now, especially after lockdown, a lot of older generation, older demographic are coming to TikTok and creating stuff and looking for, for different types and with different kinds of videos. TikTok is more popular than Google. By the end of 2021, Cloudflare data showed that TikTok.com is the most popular domain and ranked number one. So, uh, behind TikTok, there is Google, followed by Facebook, Microsoft, and Apple. So I think that's uh, also one of the things uh, why they try to ban uh, TikTok. Basically, if you can compete with uh, TikTok, you can just ban it, yeah? Uh, TikTok is a very diverse world. You can, you can find anything you want there. Just type in TikTok search, 
anything you want. For example, if, if, you're, if you like cars, just type car TikTok, and there will pop up a, a, the, a lot of different accounts about uh, car, a lot of videos about car. Uh, Parasto showed, you, showed her video, and you will see a great example how they uh, niche their radio station and how they post uh, their stuff about their station. So there's a lot of example about uh, examples of radio station on TikTok. Uh, I just showed you a few of them. So there is BBC Radio 1, Radio 105, Radio Dalmatia, uh, which is radio station from my country, Croatia. And they got more, for example, BBC, BBC Radio, more than 1 million followers. Radio 105, more than 200,000 followers. So they're, they're doing a very good job on TikTok. What type of content should you create? Uh, there's a lot of different type of content that you, sh that you can create. For example, I, uh, I will show you one uh, entertain video from one radio station from Toronto. Gem 104.5, I am Shannon, and if you are dreaming of a white Christmas here in Toronto, you are in luck because although it's not 100% guaranteed, there is still a very good chance that we are going to be getting snow right before Christmas right here in the city. It's like Mother Nature was like, bruh, I got you. It's Gem. You put me on a pedestal and tell me I'm the best. So what she done is that they got their own TikTok account. <laughs> And people who are watching they, and uh, follow their TikTok account are typing different names and different things in their comment section. And her job is to say this word loud or live when they are uh, when they are when she is live and talking about something on their radio station. So what what they done is they gathered their own community on their TikTok profile, and they uh, they uh, motivate them to follow on uh, their radio station live. But it's just not entertainment which you can post on TikTok. You can motivate other people. You can inform them. You can post different news on your TikTok profile. You can educate uh, your audience, your people, and definitely uh, you can inspire them about a lot of different topics. Also, you can post your behind the scenes content. So, uh, a lot of uh, content that you are, a lot of good content that you are already creating, you can just uh, film behind the scenes because a lot of people don't know how the radio stations work, what you do behind the scenes, and they are interested in this kind of stuff. So he's, this is one video example. Okay, so this is the radio station that I work for, Q Radio 105.1, and we're based in Metro Manila. Here's a quick pan of our new booth. It just got a makeover. That's the throne, and that's where the magic happens. This is where we choose our songs. And that's my annoying radio partner. Good morning! Why do you have to be so loud? Did you notice that he doesn't have uh, a lightning? He doesn't have special microphone? He just uses his, uh, his mobile phone. He just clicks on record and film a lot of different angles and just posts it on TikTok. It's about raw content, not about editing different kind of and filtering this, uh, this video. It's just about raw content for TikTok. So uh, three reasons why TikTok. A brand that wants to stay relevant needs to be a TikTok. First reason, why their organic reach. Second, the only place where the younger generation hang out and possibility to monetize. You can add, uh, if you got good following, and good reach on your TikTok account, you can add uh, TikTok to your marketing plan. So basically, when you are selling, uh, when you are selling your stuff, when you are selling your uh, audience, your reach, you can put uh, TikTok in marketing plan, and you can monetize it. As you can see, video doesn't have to kill Radio Star. So where to start? My recommendation is, if you don't have uh, TikTok for a radio station, first uh, step is basically enter TikTok. Second is connect your social, uh, social, other social networks with TikTok. You can add your Instagram account and you can add your YouTube account. That's what I've done in the beginning. In the beginning. Uh, I didn't have my YouTube channel and I got my uh, Instagram account with <coughs> around 200 uh, followers. I started creating content on TikTok 
which, got, which has uh, uh, very uh, good organic reach. And people from one place with good organic reach starts to follow me on other platforms which doesn't have a good reach. For example, Instagram today, anything you want to post, you, you, you got to put your money uh, to, got to, to, have, uh, to have a better reach. Uh, Instagram Reels are okay, but other types of uh, posts don't go so well. Huh, that's basically it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs> very generous of you. Yeah, You're not working with radio, but you can start any time. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, stay, stay on. We, we can have some questions to Dario later on, and uh, he's going to give us uh, his most important takeaways from, from this session as well. But please welcome again Parastu from Swedish Radio, and now we're going to look into some very hands-on tips about how a radio station actually can work with, with content. So um, go on, Parastu. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, let's start by watching another clip uh, by Creeperpodden that we saw before. Det finns ett särskilt ögonblick av Eurovision-finalen 2016. Den som var i Globen i Stockholm och som leddes av Petra Mede och Mons Selmerlöv som har blivit mytomspunnet. Det hela började en månad efter finalen då en anonym person kontaktade Creepypodden för att berätta vad han hade varit med om. Han hade jobbat med själva evenemanget och han hade haft en kollega som han kallade för Lars. Tillsammans hade de arbetat i korridorerna under arenan. Lars hade agerat allt mer nervöst och konstigt fram till att någon hände som förändrade båda deras liv för alltid. Och vad det var, det märktes faktiskt i rutan, om man bara vet vad man ska titta efter. Du hör vad i avsnitt 31 av Creepypodden i P3. Are you intrigued? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Okej, okay, så so we're on TikTok. Uh, we are doing what we need to do there. Uh, we get social media presence. We get brand awareness. Uh, I work for a radio company, so my boss has always asked me, then what? Well, we convert listenings. Uh, this episode uh, you just saw from TikTok, um, week five, you see, there was about a thousand listenings. Then week six, uh, where I posted a TikTok, you can see there is a little line going straight up. And then it goes down a little bit. So I can't stand here saying that, oh, if you get TikTok, then all of your podcasts will get a big boom. This is a pretty famous podcast in Sweden already. But I can't, can't say that we created an interest on a third-party platform, which made them come back to us. And we're talking about conversion, and it's important to remember that you can't add links to TikTok unless it is an ad, which this is not. So uh, you have to watch the clip, then you have to uh, exit the app, then you have to go into another app, search for, and then remember what the podcast is called and what the episode is called. Then you have to find the episode, and then you have to listen. So it's a pretty big effort for listening to podcasts. Uh, so that is a big indicator for us uh, that they're interested and they are keen to listen. Another important thing to remember, uh, I am from Sweden, which I've said a thousand times. Uh, we make content in Swedish, which means we are um, we reach Swedish, the Swedish-speaking uh, audience. So everyone doing content in English, congratulations, you're reaching the whole world. <laughs> uh, but we are not. Uh, and also, Sweden is a country where approximately 10 million people. And TikTok is big in Sweden, but it's the biggest uh, with youths. And according to a governmental study, half of the people born between 2000 and 2010 are using TikTok every day. So. Looking at the numbers, this is a pretty great. It's just 5,000 on this episode, but if we do it 100 times, then we will reach a bigger audience. A little bit about Creepypodden i P3. It is a horror podcast with journalist Jack Werner. He's a famous in Sweden for his stories about creepypasta, which is scary stories from the internet. Important to remember, his stories are fictional, so it's not facts. Uh, 21,700 followers is 22,500 by now, <laughs> in five months, and we reached over 1.3 million accounts. It's more now. I did this presentation a week ago. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is Creepypodden in P3. Little short about how I work. I work at Swedish Radio. It's the public service radio in Sweden. 
We are, Kim was talking about security. We're not allowed to have TikTok on our company phones because of security reasons. So we have TikTok phones, kind of a smart burner phone for TikTok who has no company connection. Uh, and that's where we create the content. I work at a development project where we <clears throat> ask ourselves, how do we reach the teen audience? And I work with the di digital part, so naturally I'm on TikTok. Um, and we don't make any unique material for TikTok. We package the amazing material that Swedish Radio already has to TikTok. So it's very much about um, storytelling. It says TikToks on podcasts. Today we're doing on CreepyPodnet and another podcast that I will tell you a little bit more about later. We work with data informed content creation. Uh, doing content is amazing, but we have to look. It's very, very important to look back. How is it performing? So I look at it as data in two stages. First, we look at TikTok's uh, own analytics tool. How is it performing on the platform? Are people looking? Are people saving it? Are they commenting? A clip can have 5 million views, which is great, but maybe 100 people saved it. You know, you have to look at the different types of statistics. All right, let's say the TikTok performs perfectly. Do they come back to us? Do they look, listen to our own product? And that is what we do. Um, both of the Creepypod and clips you saw, uh, the episodes are from 2016 and 2018. So it's all older episodes of the podcast, which makes me, it allows me to go back and look at, okay, does it, anything happen to this old episode that we have? Um, it's harder on new, episode, uh, new episodes. I can't promise that, you know, a peak is a peak. All right, but going from podcast to TikTok, um, it's important to have these three things. All of you in the room, it's, it's not a new three things. When you create a podcast or a radio show, these three things are very important. Um, you wouldn't uh, release a radio show every Sunday, every, some month, maybe. You do it consistent, consistently. So, how do I make this 40-minute podcast to a 40-second clip that makes them listen to the 40-minute podcast? It's important to have strategy. We have it for everything else. It's very important to have it for the TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Why are you on TikTok? Why, what type of content do you want to make? The next thing is storytelling. We don't make unique content for TikTok. We package the things we already have to something new. Uh, that story about Eurovision, I think it was like 10 minutes long, maybe. So we work with radio. We are good at, we are already good at uh, storytelling. So use our, you know, the facts you already have to this new platform. And cheesy enough, consistency is key. It's great to try out new platforms, but if the thought is, oh, the new generation is on TikTok, we should try it out. That's a great thought, but can you follow up? Do you, does your staff have resources to do it over a whole year? Do they have time to look back every week? Can they evaluate? So these th three things are really important. A part of our strategy is to make people discuss our content. Of course, we want people to talk about it. Uh, so this is a comment section about a video called The Realm of the Goat Man. Is it as dramatic as it sounds <laughs> in Sweden? So on this, in this comment section, people are actually sharing their own stories. Uh, where I lived at my parents' house, I lived like 20 minutes from there. I would never. I wouldn't either. But the video you saw earlier with the Eurovision mystery, there was a comment that catched my eye, which is, can someone just tell me so I don't have to watch? <laughs> uh, which is fun, because we have the engaged audience, and then we have the not so much engaged audience, but we made the both groups interested. I think this thread is about 60 comments, just being, it's been 30 minutes now, now it's 37 minutes, are you okay? You haven't answered, blah, blah, blah. So, well, it's, it's engagement on TikTok, and they're talking about our content. Um, so, we talked a little bit about Creepypod and Pietria. We work with another podcast <clears throat> called Pietria Documentar. Compared to Creepypod, this is a whole other product. Creepypod was fictional. Pietria Documentar is about imp impactful, important events in Sweden and around the world. It's a bit more serious. We need to work with <clears throat> the producers, the reporters of the show. It takes a little bit more time. Um, and people that are in the episodes, uh, I mean, in the events, are in the episodes. So, for example, the kidnapping of the Uppsala student, 
the man who was kidnapped is in the, in the documentary, and the guy who kid, kidnapped him is also in the documentary. Let's watch. And it's in Swedish, so please read the subtitles. Om, om de inte skulle få det de ville ha eller att jag lyckades fly, då skulle de bara åka massor soldater typ, till mina släktingar och mina kusinbarn och skjuta allihopa. Men jag satt ju där, jag satt ju där i liksom ett källarrum. Jag var bunden med tejp och jag hade blivit neddragad. Liksom. Det kändes som att allting var möjligt. Han hade ju räknat upp adresserna och visste ju var folk bor. Jag tror jag, jag tror jag aldrig kommer bli samma person igen efter att ha hört det. För det, det var så hemskt. And we keep the, the TikTok uh, true to the product. So we use the in interviews from the documentary, uh, material from police investigations, archive material, and such. I made this clip in, 20, like in the middle of 2021. This format was amazing. We got the same peak I showed you before. I had the same peak on this one and uh, several more episodes. But going into 2022, we saw, oh, it's not working anymore. We're not getting as many views. We're not getting as many likes and comments. So we had to uh, go back to the drawing board, which is really important working with these type of, types of um, uh, podcasts. A little short about Peter documentary. It was the first TikTok account with podcast focus we worked with. But here is the slide I was looking for. <laughs> back to the drawing board, working with third party platforms. Today it's called TikTok. Uh, 10 years uh, in front, it will be something else. 10 years back, it was Vine. If someone remembers Vine, I miss it so much. Uh, so, <laughs> it's really important to make time to go back to the drawing board because all of these apps are fast pacing, they're developing all the time, and we have to do it with them. That was me. Thank you so much for listening. Wow. Now at least I know a little bit more about TikTok. I, I, um, I started with asking um, you in here who, how many actually know how TikTok works and, and so on. Um, you're many more here in the, in the room right now than when I asked the question. But if I ask the same question now, how many of you know what's the difference between TikTok and other social medias? Hands up, please. Oh, yeah, it's still one third. We have to, we have to work a little bit more. So come up on stage, please. <laughs> that means that there have to be a lot of questions uh, in, in the room, I guess. So please think about some questions during um, the time uh, Dario and Pasta gives you the most important takeaways. Uh, Dario, will you start? What's the most important thing you talked about? Uh, so first thing is that your content can reach a wider audience effortlessly because TikTok is new, TikTok is fresh, and TikTok's got a uh, very good organic reach. There's a lot of countries now uh, that they don't even got TikTok ads. So uh, by the time pass, TikTok ads will be much, as much, much more popular and the reach will go down. But we can use it now uh, when it's still new and there's even not uh, much uh, other, uh, other, uh, other people uh, creating on TikTok. Uh, second, this document, the great content you're already creating. Uh, on radio station, you're creating very good content now, so just need to film it and post it on TikTok uh, in video form. And third, TikTok is not only about dancing and lip-sync. Uh, music Live is about dancing and lip-sync. Now you can create and post it on TikTok anything uh, you want that, uh, that uh, is resonating with your radio station. And I can guarantee you that you will find your community there on TikTok. Uh, what you need to remember is that Gen Z uh, don't like a different kind of filters. They just want raw material, ma ma uh, ma material and they just want for you to be authentic. You, what they just want from you to be real, like you are. And they, they like this kind of stuff and they, they will follow you. So how do you do to be authentic? Uh, I just post my own story, my thoughts, uh, how they really are. And I think that, that that's because I was creating a lot of content back then in the beginning. Uh, I don't recommend you to film 20 to 30 videos a day. Start, start maybe so, so with uh, one or two uh, a week. Uh, and uh, 
if, if you see any results, you can step up the game. So I was creating, and I'm, I'm now still uh, creating an uh, authentic, authentic uh, piece of content, and that's, that's the main reason why people uh, follow me. So if you go to my TikTok profile and look for some videos, that's not uh, uh, film movies and with a with, with lot of um, uh, uh, Different kind of uh, lightning uh, and and very uh, very good with good budget uh, microphone or cameras. That's just uh, material from TikTok with uh, and I just uh, um, created for uh, Gen Z for stuff for them and they can feel it through the video. So basically, when you when you post, for example, photo on Facebook or Instagram, you can put a lot of different filters there. You can uh, you can go with different kind of poses, uh, but on uh, on video they can feel you much better. They can feel your energy. They can feel your attitude. Attitude. They can feel uh, what you're you're thinking. And so basically, yeah, they just decide is this type of content they want to follow or this person kind of uh, kind of content they can follow. Hmm. So yeah, that's my little TED yeah. talk. Yes, learn and do right. Uh, but do you do dance videos? No, no. Have dance. you ever done a dance video? <laughs> uh, I think that yes. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, when I, I when I uh, decided to post anything just to uh, to learn, because back then there's not there were not a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of articles about TikTok. So and I need to learn on my own mistakes. That's the main reason why I created so much content, so I can decide. Oh, that's going very good for me. That's not going very good for me. Uh, and I I'm creating so much content so I can uh, fa I can learn faster. If I posted one video a day, I need to post about one month what I can learn yeah. in one day. So I posted different kind of stuff and I, w I was learning on my own mistakes. Yeah. But it's still fun with dance videos sometimes, right? Uh, any questions for, for Daria? Hands up. Yeah, there's one in the middle. There's a microphone coming to you. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm from uh, Danish Broadcasting Corporation. My name is Anders. Um, you seem very happy with TikTok. Um, are you uh, in any? Do you have any concerns? Are you worried about what it does to young people? And that's a very good question. Yeah, uh, I'm not worried at all because I know that uh, if uh, TikTok stays, then great, everything's good. If TikTok is getting banned, I know that all this attention needs to go somewhere. And I'm following the situation which, which, which is happening right now. I'm following TikTok main account. I'm following TikTok of CEO. And I'm following different kind of comments that are on video sec uh, in comment section, different kind of videos. And I know that uh, new jet, that uh, um, what they are doing to TikTok now uh, will not uh, uh, give a reason for a TikTok audience to go to Meta because I I can see through comment section that uh, probably they today generation will uh, will uninstall. Instagram, they don't have Facebook, they will uninstall Instagram too, and they will probably go to some new platform. So that's ba basically some new opportunity. So I think that new urge, if this happens, new generation will go to other app, which will call that, oh, that's only for kids, that's only for dancing, so everything will re repeat again. So uh, I'm not concerned, I'm not even thinking about it, I'm doing my job, so whatever, whatever happens. Um, about it. Yeah. I'm going, going up to you, Pastor. Yeah. What's, your, what's your main takeaways from, from what you talked about? Uh, my first takeaway is figure out why you want to be on TikTok. That is specifically important for podcasts and radio and media companies. Uh, just don't, don't go there because the young people are there. Have a strategy. What do you want to gain from it? The second thing is, even if it, you're making unique content or uh, repackaging original content, keep it true to the podcast. We don't have to get down with the kids on TikTok. Well, whatever we're doing, and we have a big range of listeners, we're doing something right. So use those keys and put it on TikTok. And I believe, most importantly, worth with your data. It's very, very important to look at how it's performing and if people are coming back to your 
original content and learn from your success. Please, uh, <laughs> please do that because we can. We always look at what's going bad and we should do it better. But what are we doing that's actually working? So work with your success. Yeah, something we did. That's something good to think yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, I know there's any, there is more questions for for Daria, but I want to check if there's any questions for for Palasto. Yeah, many questions. There's. Uh, do you have a question for P Parasto? Yes. OK, go on then. Uh, <clears throat> hello, Parasto. Hi. <clears throat> I wonder if you had the experience of creating your TikTok elements at the same time that you're producing or scheduling um, your podcast, for example. Yes. And if, is there a benefit to that if you've done so? Uh, this project a little bit more different. I only work with uh, this project. with Now it's TikTok. Um, so I mainly work with other like desks, uh, by example, Kripe Poddan, he's in Stockholm, I'm in Gothenburg, so I work with him. Uh, but it's a really important question, how do we make time for this new uh, platform? We're already on Facebook maybe and Instagram, we have a podcast, and then we have the weekly meeting, and then I have to go to the gym, blah, blah, blah. So it's very important to, <laughs> may I don't, but ma make time for, <laughs> make time for, that's why I said, why do you want to be there and be consistent with it? If you want to try TikTok, make time for TikTok. Wow. Yeah. That was a t-shirt. <laughs> if, if you want to be on TikTok, make time for TikTok. Next, next time you have yes. that on. I have this one. I can change for next time. Uh, okay, perfect. we have some more questions in the middle uh, over there. Maybe um, I, if I can add. Just behind one. the camera. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Go. Um, what can help you is that uh, you can uh, film a huge podcast, for example, 45 uh, minutes or one hour. Then after you film it, you can cut, uh, cut it into a uh, little piece of content, for yeah. example, 30 second, 45 second, and you can post it on TikTok. So you got uh, one big piece of content, you can cut, for example, 10 or 15 piece of content, and you got, uh, you can put it on your inst on TikTok account, Instagram Reels, Reels, Facebook Reels, and YouTube Shorts. So basically, with one filming of uh, 45 or one hour uh, long, you can get a lot of different uh, pieces, up to 100. So yeah, maybe this okay. will help somebody. We have room for one short question before we have to finish this session. Hi, Daryl from Triton. Um, I was just wondering, what kinds of data does TikTok make available to creators? Um, there's different ones. I mean, TikTok analytics is good, but it's not my favorite <laughs> because you get some statistics from the, your whole account, which is like the regular stuff, likes, comments, uh, shares, how many people you reached. But then in every individual video, you can see how many looked at the whole video, uh, how long did they watch the video, uh, how many followers did you gain. So you get a lot of different, I mean, more than that types of data, but it's only 60 days back. So I have an amazing Excel sheet that I fill out every week. So it's really good, but also like evaluate what types of data is reported for your company or your podcast. Uh, for us, it's shares are really important. Uh, and you got also that that's a good answer. Oh, and you, you can and you can also uh, export from your PC. You can log uh, in with your PC account to your TikTok account, and you can export all the data in your Excel. And you got everything about profile and video. Yeah. Right. Now we're going to do a dance video? No, we're not. Uh, thank you very much, Dara Palastu and Dario, for coming and joining some <laughs> good advices about how to work on TikTok. Well, thank you so much. And the next presentation here at Track 2 starts at 4.05. And it's going to be about the content uh, and how to reach the young audience with uh, news content.